Uh, pardon me, Mr. Jordan. Could I have your auto... Uh, your John Hancock? What's going on here? We need your help! What's up, Docs and Docettes? Trevor Thompson, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic here, and uh, this Looney Tunes quickie is once again about Space Jam. Now, if you don't know me necessarily and you're kind of new to my videos, uh, this whole thing basically started with Space Jam. I did a, a review called Space Jam Stinks, and I meant it, okay? So much so that uh, it was a two-parter. The first one was 45 minutes, the second one was equally long, and uh, yeah, I, uh, I I'm I'm not I'm not a fan basically. Uh, that's that's the, the the short of it. But there is new stuff to talk about. I'm not just beating a dead horse with this uh, with this Space Jam stuff. I have new stuff to present to the table. Uh, to the table? Yes, to the table. What table? There is no table. It's a proverbial table. Fine, you and your proverbs. You you wait outside with your proverbs. I'm anti-verb. Uh, it's uh, when I was working on the Who Framed Roger Rabbit commentary. Uh, we uh, we interviewed uh, Dave Spafford, and Dave Spafford, in the animation world, is a f***ing rock star. And uh, in the Looney Tunes world is, is really where he should be hailed as a rock star, because what he did for, if not just the Looney Tunes, you know, the, the, the Who Framed Roger Rabbit movie in general, you know, the Looney Tunes within it as well, um... It just for you know him being you know a, a multi-talented guy who knows his own value and doesn't let anyone f with it. So while I was compiling all of the interviews together for the commentary, um, obviously there was stuff in everybody's interview that uh, I couldn't use for the commentary, but I could use elsewhere. And uh, this little piece of uh, uh, Spafford's interview didn't really have anywhere that I could put it for future projects, and it didn't really fit with you know, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, it would have worked for, you know, had I, if I had had it for uh, the uh, the old Space Jam review, but uh, this, this can always work as a quickie. So this is Dave Spafford from his interview with me uh, talking to him about Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but at this point we talk about Space Jam because he worked very briefly on Space Jam and his experience was such that, oh my God, everyone here is an idiot. And the director's an idiot, and no one, you know, and it's just, it's a disaster. And and Warner Brothers isn't respect, Warner Brothers isn't respecting the characters. So this is basically us talking about the one part, animation-wise at least, in Space Jam that is good. Hold on, let me just try that again. The one part, this is uh, Spafford talking about uh, uh, us from the interview talking about the in, in terms of animation the part of space gems that's go odd go. the one part of space jam from an animation sense only that maybe on a good day might be considered g o o d i won't say that it's good but whatever that what I just said spells G O O D. <sighs> he talks about that, so he talks about all that here, and uh, and his experience. And uh, I also want to say thank you to uh, Bailey Lepatka for uh, providing uh, some of the most crucial footage in this little bit. So uh, enjoy. Thank you. As the Looney Tunes, the self-appointed Looney Tunes critic. Um, those that know me know that I am by no means a fan of Space Jam. Uh, the first, so, the first. I worked on it and I hate it. Yeah, that's that's what I that's where I was going with this. <laughs> so, how did your did your work experience differ from Roger Rabbit on Space Jam? Uh, you, yeah, that was an interesting one. Okay, so you know we, I had had my studio for several years now after Roger Rabbit, and then they decided to make this film Space Jam. They called me in, and uh, I went in and had a meeting with... Uh, with they shot all the live action already, and um, so I had a meeting with Joe Pitka, uh, the producer. I can't remember his name. It wasn't worth remembering. Um, and, um, and a couple Warner Brothers people that I'd never seen before. 
And they pitched this film and said, you know, hey, yeah, we're thinking about having you uh, grab some sequence. And I was going, oh, great. Let's, let's see what you got. And they showed me the basketball sequence. And they said, you know, this is all green screen. And the whole, it was like a green basketball uh, gymnasium. And with Michael Jordan standing in the middle of it and a million characters in green suits uh, with a basketball playing a game. And I went, I went, so what's going on here? And they're going, oh, uh, well, these are all the characters. Uh, uh, the, the character you're watching right there that's, in, that's just crossed in front of uh, Michael Jordan, that's, that's going to be Tweety, but the, you won't see the guy because he's in a green suit. You'll just see the ball going up and down that he's, that he's playing. And I went, uh, okay, but what happens when he goes, he just went in front of Michael Jordan? And you just wiped out all of Michael Jordan's body with this guy's green suit. You're going, oh, well, the guy, the guy in the green suit's going to disappear. I said, if the guy in the green suit disappears, so is Michael Jordan's right. body because his body is behind it. Oh, my God. They're going, no, you don't get it. And Joe Pick has started yelling at me like, oh, this kid doesn't f-ing know what he's talking. He's like, just went off because he, he thinks he's the Sam Peckinpah of, uh, of, uh, of the Commercials. 90s. No, he's a. He's an idiot. And, um, and so he starts freaking out and just like, and, and I just went, well, hey, you know, knock yourself out. Uh, uh, you, you're not going to be able to use this footage. And, uh, uh, and then they kind of put a sour note on it and on the whole thing. And all of a sudden he didn't want to work with me and we left. A couple months later, they called up and went, um, you were right. We have a sequence here that is totally unusable. Uh, Joe Pick is no longer part of the project. Um, damage done. We have to live with it. Uh, is there any way you can help us with this film? We are in trouble. So I came back in. I said, okay, here, this is what we can do. We're going to have to edit this sequence down. And then where the scene right here that's very important that you cannot eliminate uh, with Tweety going in front of of uh, him, I said, we're going to have to lose the, the, the basketball. We're going to have to garbage mat that out. And we're going to have to have Tweety come close to the camera, bouncing an animated ball that's closer to camera. So we're going to lose this real basketball just for a moment uh, because we have to bring Tweety closer to the camera so that Michael Jordan, who's far away, is now blocked by this bot, this green guy. We have to bring Tweety closer to cover up the green guy. And so, uh, and it worked, you know, and, uh, and they said, well, okay, would you, would you, would, would your studio do some sequences? And I went, um, I, I, I'll tell you what, I, I'll do it if I can do it from my studio and nobody is allowed to come over and tell any of us what to do. I don't want anybody to come over here. You, you guys have already wasted an enormous amount of time. You're now in trouble. I can get you out of trouble, let's just, but just let me do what I do. And I don't want... I don't want any production supervisor looking over our shoulders, counting drawings, asking stupid questions. Just I'll, I'll get something done. I'll do, we'll do it the very best we can. I'll bring it to you. You'll look at it. We'll make notes. If there's something needs to be fixed, we'll do it. But you, you guys are in trouble and they knew it and they were cool. The, the people who ended up, um, what's his name? Uh, um, Ron, Ron, Ron Tip uh, was the producer that replaced the other guy. He was amazing. He looked at in that one meeting. It was the second meeting that I had, and he sat there and he goes, "Does everybody understand what this guy's saying? He can fix this. Do you do you understand what it is he's saying in order to fix it?" And they're going, "Yes." And going, he's going, "Okay, give this guy whatever he wants, pay him whatever they want, and leave him alone." And he was so cool. And that's, that's a sign of a, that's a very good producer because he, you know, he's like on these guys, these guys worked on, these guys worked on the film 
on on Roger Rabbit. So like, let these guys do this. We're not, we're, you know, why would we have this guy follow someone who's just rediscovering the wheel? He was very cool. I, I uh, did you did don't know they, where he's at now, but I I really liked him. Did they did they ask you to look at uh, the uh, the the basketball commercials or the shoe commercials, the Nike commercials that the movie was based on? No. No. So you really so what in the in the in the final uh movie, what what scenes are yours? Uh we did the sequence where they it was called Spit Shine. They 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 end up uh fixing up the uh the gymnasium. That's uh, uh that's where then we did so then we did some stuff where the like in the locker room getting ready for the game or something like that. Um, that spit yeah, shine scene. I, I did. I, I, I wasn't that into the whole thing. I was like, you know, I, I, I'm sure I could have said, uh, give us a couple more sequences. I'm, I'm you know, I'm going to amp this up over here. I kind of just wanted to get off that film. I, I felt like that was a film that, that I'm definitely not going to publicize that I worked on it. Did, uh, you know, cause it just didn't one, they went with all the modern Chuck Jones shit and it looked just like that. But if you look at our stuff, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's more pop. Classic. The shot where uh, Daffy kisses the Warner shield on his butt. That's you. Oh man. You have no idea how, we threw that in. That was our, that we decided to do that. And, um, <laughs> because Daffy turns around, he goes, I oh, work from Warner brothers, you know, and it was just like a, a stamp on his butt. And, and, uh, uh, one of my animators, uh, JC Wegman, um, he goes, Oh, you ought to, you ought to have him kiss his ass, his own ass. And we all just stopped and went, Oh, <laughs> yeah, and uh, that was a Tom McGrath scene. Uh, Tom McGrath's like one of the main DreamWorks directors. He's done like a million features, uh, CG uh, films. Uh, he he was like my number one animator. He was great, and he did a beautiful job. I I did some layout drawings. I gave it to him. I just said, "No, go for it." Just almost bury his head in there. He kisses it so hard. Yeah, and. You know, I said they're probably going to throw it out, but you know, just let's just let's just see what happens. And they freaked out. Really? They freaked out. That was like that became that that when they when they finished the film, the the t shirts that they gave everybody was was that scene. <laughs> Warner's didn't like that, huh? <laughs> Wasn't that amazing? Isn't Dave Spafford a rock star? I know I say that a lot, but uh, you know it's it's really true. Uh, if you, if you've already seen the uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit commentary that we did, uh, you already know uh, from from all the work he did on that uh, what a rock star he is. Uh, if you just watch this video and you don't know that Spafford's a rock star by now, talk about it in the comments. Uh, you know, what, what, if you like the movie, do you like the movie less for knowing this stuff? Or do you like it more? If you hate the movie. Does this make you hate it anymore? Talk about it in the in the in the comments and uh, be sure to like and subscribe because YouTube it doesn't matter to me, you guys. I like the relationship that we have. We have a very interactive relationship, uh, but uh, YouTube is an algorithm which is just you know numbers. And uh, so if you want to help us out at all, so we can make more videos and, and do it with a with a greater frequency. Um, then uh, and you can't donate money to the Patreon or anything like that. Then the best thing you can do is like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and uh, on social media, be sure to share your videos. I mean, I'm sure if you love Looney Tunes, I mean, Sean's my video wrangler, and I'm shooting this today on Sean's birthday. It's his 40th birthday. I turned 40 a few days before uh, releasing the uh, the Quackbusters review. We've been friends for a really long time, and one of the bases of our friendships basis was uh was looney tunes and so i know you guys have friends that, that love looney tunes so be sure to share this stuff and uh be sure to push all the right buttons that you need to do and uh, in the meantime that's going to do it for this looney tunes critic quickie i'm trevor thompson the self-appointed looney tunes critic and until next time that's all folks